In 2005, Mr. Friedman, you wrote a seminal book, The World is Flat. 16 years later, if I were to ask you to write a book on the world as it stands today in these pandemic times, how would you describe the world? Well, first of all, it's great to be back with you uh, for the India Today Conclave, uh, Rajdeep. Thank you. Um, well, I would, I would not be able to do it in one phrase. Uh, one thing I would say is that it's flatter than ever. Um, I'm sitting in Palo Alto, California, um, and I'm having a, a low latency uh, dialogue with you uh, all the way over in India. And I think even when I wrote The World Is Flat, I didn't quite imagine this. But, um, um, you know, how so would I, would I um, uh, uh, maybe describe it? I think that, that um, um, I would I use, use uh, five, different five different adjectives, adjectives this time, time Rajiv. Right? I would say, first, first of all, the world, world is really fast. Really fast. Um, the um, pace, the of, pace change of change just keeps on accelerating, on accelerating as, as this, this ecosystem, ecosystem of, of microchips, microchips bandwidth, bandwidth, sensors, software, software machine learning just keeps cycling faster and faster. So the world is getting fast. Second, I would say the world's getting fused. It's getting fused by both climate change, we're now all really experiencing the same kind of weather extremes, and being fused by telecommunications, the kind of thing we're doing right now. Third, the world's getting really deep, deep. You, you may have noticed that we suddenly added the adjective deep to everything. You know, there's no global lexicographer who ordered that. But we suddenly intuited that, wow, that's not just a fake. That's a deep fake. That's not just normal medicine. That's deep medicine. That's toggling my DNA. And that has to do with the fact that technology is going and taking us to places that are so deep, even government doesn't know where we are. Um, uh, it's getting radically open. Um, uh, with, the, with this little device here, everyone can be a publisher, a filmmaker, a paparazzi, an editor. The world is incredibly open for everyone to comment on. That has a wonderful upside, and it has some very dark downsides um, for what it means for establishing the truth. Um, uh, and lastly, it's getting, it's getting really smart um, that we have built machines now um, that uh, uh, are beyond anything our human brains have evolved. And so if you ask me what the big trends are shaping the world, it's this notion of getting fast, fused, deep, open, and smart all at the same time, and the economic and the political and the geopolitical ramifications of that. I'll come to the geopolitics a little later, uh, Thomas Friedman, but let me, in a way, try and contest what you said. You seem to suggest that, you know, in a very positive way, the glass uh, half full, you say the world is still flat. What if I said that the pandemic, in a way, has shown that the world is actually now more divided, both within and outside? The pandemic has affected us all, but very differently. More unequal, therefore, in terms of opportunities, access to basic facilities, be it healthcare or education in a country like India, I see that the di digital divide only gets accentuated depending on where you live and your income levels. In the United States, we've seen people uh, outside food ration shops. Uh, you know, the kind of scenes that we'd never thought we'd see in the United States. So I'm just wondering, actually, has the pandemic shown us up to be a grossly unequal society where opportunities are very different and access to seemingly basic facilities like healthcare and indeed education depend on income levels squarely? Well, that's a perfectly um, a good question. It has nothing to do with my book, though, because when I said flat, <laughs> I, 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 when I used the term flat, it was not a synonym for equal. Um, when I wrote The World is Flat, it was that we had created basically a telecommunications platform on which more people in more places could compete, connect, and collaborate on more things for less money in more ways on more days than ever before. That was how I used the term flat, but it was not in any way uh, to suggest that things would be equal. Um, uh, in, in some ways, it made the world more unequal, um, in some ways, less equal. But it all depends what you do with that platform. But it has nothing to do with the end of, uh, you know, inequality in the world or, or um, you know, different, um, uh, you know, courses that, that, that countries would take. It's all about what you do with that platform. And what the pandemic, you know, uh, really, you know, shows us, obviously, is that it does what you said. It, it exposes 
inequalities around the world, um, uh, brings them into stark relief. It was like a giant global stress test, but it had nothing to do with the thesis I was arguing um, before, which was really a technological argument um, that my, my view has always been, people say, you know, I'm a technological determinist. I say, well, yes, I am in this sense that I believe if the people, if people have the technology that I can sit in Palo Alto and Silicon Valley and connect to an audience in India, that they will use that technology. Whether we will use it, whether we will use it to promote healthy ideas, um, consensus or hate and venom, that's a whole nother question. I'm not a determinist about that at all. And so that's all about what values you bring to this platform.